All right, in this video, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a countdown timer to our Adventures of Mario game. We've already added coins and lives and jumping and all of that. So we're just gonna add a countdown timer because we're only gonna have, let's just say, uh, 15 seconds or however, many, however much time you wanna give Mario to obtain all of his coins. So, we're gonna do a couple things. Now there's actually an internal timer in all processing programs called Millie's that keeps track of time in your program from the second you hit the play button in milliseconds. So we're actually gonna use that to keep track of our game time or how long we've actually been playing. So in global, underneath where we've created our counters variable, let's go ahead and add a variable called total time. Not gonna set that equal to anything just yet, so just a variable called total time. And let's go down to our function draw. This is where millis actually begins. So I'm just gonna add right underneath where we're calling our functions. We're gonna say that total time is equal to millis, M-I-L-L-I-S, no capital, parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon. And we could put a comment saying start timer. All right, so this is now gonna be keeping track of our total time for the millis clock, all right, in our draw. Now, let's scroll down to our game. We're just gonna go all the way down to where we've made our scoreboard and our lives and all that stuff. Let's actually just copy and paste all of lives here. All right, so I'm just gonna borrow all of this for lives and paste it below. And we're just gonna turn this into our timer. All right, so the font, the size, all that can stay the same. The first text box, we're gonna say time remaining. All right, and let's just put that all the way over on the right-hand side, something like 600 for the X. And for the text, let's just say total time. And let's make that 700 for X. All right, so time remaining, text total time. So this should show us our internal clock. Let's press play and click. All right, here it is. Now there's a lot going on right now. First off, it's counting in milliseconds, which is why it's such a big number. And second, it's also displaying the decimals when really we just want the whole number or the integer. We're gonna break that down by actually doing a quick little conversion here. So at the top of our timer uh, section, I'm just gonna enter down all this. We're gonna say that total time is equal to, um, let's go int total time divided by 1,000. So what that's gonna do is it's going to convert to seconds and integer. So integer is only gonna display the first number or the whole number, and then divided by 1,000 converts a milliseconds to seconds. So let's go ahead and press play. Now we have a counting timer. Now, a couple more things. We actually want this to be counting down, of course, uh, instead of counting up, so that's pretty easy. Uh, so we're gonna make a variable called time limit, so that way you can set to whatever you want your time limit to be. Maybe down the road, if you wanna make uh, different difficulty levels, you could change how much time you actually have. So let's go ahead to our global here. Underneath total time, let's make a variable called time limit, and I'm gonna set that equal to 15. Drop a question in, how much, or a comment, how much time do you have to succeed? All right, so there we go. Time limit equals 15. Let's go back down to our game. And where do we have our timer, 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 timer? So right here, where we're displaying total time, what we're actually gonna display is we're gonna display time limit minus total time. And I'm just gonna drop in a comment, display countdown Timer. Now, if you didn't want a countdown timer, you would just display your time here. You didn't have to display the limit subtracting the total time. Let's press play. Beautiful, counting down. Now, there is a problem though. If I restart, and if I hang out on the splash screen for a while, oops, sorry. If I, if I hang out on the splash screen for a while, so here I am talking, splash screen, reading my instructions, etc. Let's just say that we've been on the splash screen for five or six seconds, and only have seven seconds remaining. So because we put the timer in draw, it's actually going to start counting the second your game begins. We really want to just display how long we've been on our game. So if you spend five minutes on the splash screen, uh, you're gonna be negative five minutes and 15 seconds for your time. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're actually gonna to have to keep track of the amount of time we're on the splash screen and only display the game time. 
So we're going to add two more timers here, okay? And we're going to we're going to come back to this section in a moment. So let's go up to our global. Okay, so we're going to add a variable called splash time and a variable called game time. All right. So this is the total time of program running. This is the amount of time on splash screen only and this is amount of time in game only. All right, so we're going to have to do a little bit of math here. So in draw, we already have total time equals millis. That's going to start our timer. That's not going to change. In our splash screen, first line here, let's just drop a comment. Let's call it timer stuff. All right, we're going to say that splash time equals total time. And this is going to begin splash screen timer. So that's going to keep track of how long we're on our splash screen. Okay. Now let's go to our game. Let's go down to where we've done our timer here. So let's just scroll all the way down to our timer section. All right. We're going to leave this guy alone for a second here. We're going to first stop the splash timer. So splash time equals splash time. And that's going to stop counting time on splash because we're no longer on splash, we're in our game. So that's gonna stop the splash time. Game time is going to equal, and we're gonna to have to do some parentheses here. Uh, it's gonna be total time minus splash time. And we're actually gonna to have to put that in parentheses. So it's gonna be like that. So it's going to say, because we have two different parentheses, we have one parentheses that's converting our integer. So that's int, parentheses, and then close all the way over here. Then we have some math. So we're saying that our total time minus our splash time is going to be equal to the amount of time that we're in our game. Divided by 1,000 converts to a second. So this is game time equals int, parentheses, parentheses, total time minus splash time, parentheses, divided by 1,000, parentheses, semicolon. And that should give us just our game time. Then right here, where we have time limit minus total time, that's going to say time limit minus game time. So now we're displaying the amount of time that we're on our game, not the entire amount of time that the program has been running, because that includes splash time. Let's press play. Let's stay on the splash screen for four or five seconds. And there we go, starting at 15. Now. This is going to run into the negatives. Okay, in the next video, we get into game over and win screen. So if you get all the coins, you win. If you run out of time or if you run out of lives, you lose. So we're going to add new stages for game over and win in the next and final video. Keep up the great work.